<laughs> Hi, welcome to Ben and Barry on Football. My name is Barry Sterling Mitchell, and I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. My compadre in crime here is... My name is Ben Dickerson. I am a New York Giants fan, and I will <laughs> remain so. <laughs> Let's talk some football. For, for full disclosure, I am a Niners fan. So we're both having a shitty season right now. <laughs> Can I say that on the air? Absolutely. You already did. I already did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Before we get started, I do want to mention I am broadcasting from beautiful Orlando, Florida. Let me give everyone a quick look out the balcony. As I knock over my beer bottle. Don't break anything. Yeah. So take a look. How you like that? Nice. Nice. I don't play golf, but it looks good. Yeah, I don't play golf either. We sit here and watch the guys go by. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I don't play golf. But it's an interesting place. We won't get into it right now. But we are at a resort in Orlando, so uh, we're having a decent time, a decent time. Good. All right, Benny, let's get started with the top five. Top five. Top five, top five. All right, let's see here. All right, we're gonna share the screen here so everyone can see. The top five. All righty. So starting from number five, as we can all see, in terms of net points, we have the Chicago Bears with 36 net points. Number four, we have the New Orleans Saints with 41 net points. Number three, those Ravens, again, surprising everybody with 75 net points. Not far, not far behind the high-scoring uh, Kansas City Chiefs with 78 net points. Yeah, they're really close. I know, aren't they? And, and again, I remind people, net points is the difference between the points uh, for or the points scored and the points against or the points that have been allowed and given up by the other team. And that's how we kind of rank our, that's how we rank the teams because uh, everyone else basically utilizes opinion. They talk about why this team, why they think this team. We don't think anything. We just go by net points. The bully is the bully. And right now in first place with a very healthy, what's that, 29 point uh, lead are your Los Angeles Rams. So this is a team here that um, is both scoring and holding people to minimal uh, points um, on defense. And that's how you get to the top of the net point chart. Anything you got to say about that, Benny? All I got to say about that is I expect the LA Rams to continue doing what they're doing. They are a very viable Super Bowl contender. Uh, the Chiefs also. I think although, and we'll get to defense later, they've been giving up a good number of points. They are a, they're scoring like a slot machine. It's crazy. And uh, that makes them a viable contender also. And the Ravens, if you still believe the defense wins championships, that's going to keep them alive for quite a while. I think they'll go deep into the playoffs. And the Saints, I think, in the NFC, could be very, very dangerous. So the net point power rankings are beginning to clear up as far as the dominant teams are concerned and the real contenders are gonna to begin to uh, surface. They're beginning to surface, absolutely. Well, you mentioned scoring, so let's go to it. These teams are putting up some serious points. Number five, the Chargers putting up 195 points so far through game seven. There you go. There's your Saints there with 204. Look who's number three, Benny. 
Yeah, I see that. That's uh, that's interesting. And of course, nobody should be surprised that the Patriots are beginning to surge. And I, I would call it a surge. They started off a little slow. Uh, the defense is starting to tighten down a little bit. Uh, you always have the Belichick factor with the way that he schemes against his opponents. Uh, that's pulling out wins for them, even though uh, man for man, the defense doesn't look as strong as you would think a contender would be. Um, and of course, the Chiefs and the Rams are just outscoring people. So it's crazy. Definitely doing it. And we know the Patriots tend to creep up into that top five, especially in net points as the season moves on. That yeah, has been the trend. Whatever issues that they have. Uh, their scoring definitely increased once Edelman got back. Now that they have Josh Gordon, um, no, it's a little more difficult for everybody. The triple team, Gronkowski. So they're starting to click a little bit. And, uh, you know, but the, the Chiefs, the funny thing about the Chiefs, I don't know if you heard anybody say that. Mm. What was it, Denver that they played last? Yeah. Literally, the the, the, the commentator said, that teams are beginning to fear <laughs> the Chiefs offense. Like they don't know whether to run left, run right, go deep, <laughs> or whatever. And let me mention something. I saw I saw something on Twitter that was funny. Someone actually had a, somewhat of a negative comment to say about Booger McFarland and <laughs> comments during the game. Right. He kept saying he's, he's he's doing the Falcons game, and he kept saying the Falcons have the best three receivers in the league. Oh, this guy! I'm going. Uh, I don't know about that, buddy. Right now, I would you would have to go with the Chiefs. I would think. Uh, I I beg to differ. Okay, what do you I say? Would, I would go with the Rams. Uh, yeah, you got a point there also. Except for now, Cooper Cup is, is injured. That's true. Uh, unless but you want to include him in the, in the calculation there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Robert Woods is, is a serious receiver. He can take you deep. He can be a possession guy. Brandon Cooks, uh, what's the phrase everybody likes to use? Takes the top off the defense. Takes the top right off of that thing, man. And and Cup is a dual threat, too, when he comes back for short and long. They run over the middle. They do it all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let's move on to points against. At number five, the Titans are showing up with a little bit of defense. This is crazy. Now, as you look at this group here, most of these teams are not what you would call Super Bowl contenders at this particular point. Um, but my contention is any team that uh, ranks high in, on defense has the potential, if they continue their uh, stingy ways, you know, to be a contender. So your Cowboys come in at number four with 123 points scored against them. Within that division, you've got the Redskins now with 121 points. Seahawks, my sleeper team, in the same division as the Rams, mm -hmm. only giving up 117 points. And your number one team there is the Ravens. They've only allowed 101 points through seven games in the season. Now, if I'm not mistaken, None of these top five defensive teams are in the top five in offense. Mm -hmm. Would that be uh, correct? Right. As a matter of fact, as I look at them, let's say here, well, the Ravens. Ravens are close. Ravens are 11th okay. in scoring. They put up 176 points. Right? Okay. The so Seahawks. The Seahawks are 23rd, they put up 143 points. Mm. The Redskins, Washington, pretty balanced team, but they're 27th in scoring with 126 points. They're actually behind your New York Giants, who scored at least, who scored 137 points. Yeah, Eli had a decent day uh, in a loss last week. Yeah, yeah. 
And the Titans, the t- Tennessee, they're 30th in scoring with 106. So these are teams that they're not scoring a lot. They're holding their teams down. So these are low-scoring, close games that they're able to uh, – Right. That, that That's giving them their reputation here relative to defense. We're going to see how far that goes. Let's move on to turnover differential. So, again, you've got the Redskins. They keep showing up. The Rams, they keep showing up, both with a turnover differential of plus six. At plus seven, at number two and number three, you have the Bears and the Seahawks, respectively, with seven, uh, with a seven uh, turnover differential plus. And the Browns are still number one. They've been number one since game one. That's correct. And it's going to be interesting when we start to get to the matchups because if you remember who they played in game one, they're about to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how it's going to turn out this time. I don't think it's going to turn out well, but. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the matchup section of the uh, of the show, which we're about to move into. Right. So, yeah, Benny, I mean, um, right now, uh, we've got uh, a nice little spread of teams between your points, your net points, your differentials, and your defense uh, in terms of those, those teams. So, let's um, – uh, I did want to mention – uh, when we were talking about Kansas City, for example, that they ranked 25th in defense. They've given up 182 points. So they are just below, believe it or not, <laughs> they're below Oakland, Miami, Cleveland, the Patriots. Patriots are actually 24th. So they're right below or right above, one step above Kansas City. Kansas City is two points better on defense than Arizona, three points better than Indianapolis and the Giants. So they really might have to, you know, there's a question, can you win a Super Bowl with just the super offense and a less than, or we'll say mediocre to low man defense? Yeah, history says no. History says no. Yeah, I would think that history uh, is serious there, man. I mean, it's absolutely bananas. But, I mean, the way that they're scoring, and, I mean, they took they took the Patriots right to, to, the, to the nth degree. The Patriots got away with a field goal near the end of the game. Um, Kansas City made a mistake of scoring a little too fast and gave uh, Tom Brady back the ball and, that can be a very uh, dangerous, difficult. Yes. <laughs> History would agree with that. History would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're going to move over to the rank, to the matchups now. Some great matchups happening. And let's start off with Thursday night football. We have the Miami Dolphins. Visiting the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans have a 37 net point bias in their favor. The turnover differential bias, however, is tied, giving Houston a bias plus of 37 points. Okay, 37 points, that's a nice number. Uh, Houston is at home. Uh, Deshaun Watson seems to be kicking off the rust or the cobwebs or whatever the heck was wrong with him. Um, DeAndre Hopkins is is still the man, and um, I'm going to like Houston at home on this one. Miami, I think, is beginning to falter with Tannehill up and down and out and in, and maybe he'll come back and maybe he won't. Osweiler came out and had one good game, which happens a lot of times um, when a starter goes down and the backup comes in and kind of catches the other team off guard, but I expect him to kind of level off. So um, I'm liking that, Houston for that. One. That seems to be that seems to be Osweiler's um, mo. Yes, have that really good game. 
Yes. Now, I hope they don't do what Denver did and give him a, a massive contract because he beat the Bears. Yeah, well, Osweiler's kind of been through this whole scenario before. So, again, history says no. <laughs> well, Miami uh, only has, has negative 26 net points. So they're, they're, they're um, ranked 24th. And Houston at least is in the positive, ranked 14th with 11 net points. Okay. That's a little bit, a little bit better there. All right, starting off the Sunday slate of games, we have, and I believe this is a London game. Yep, this is the London game. The Philadelphia Eagles versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville likes to play London like their home. They've been pretty successful in London. Uh, however, Philly has a net point bias of 46 points and a turnover differential bias of eight, give, giving them a bias plus of 54 their score and the Eagles mm. Boy, that turnover bias for Jacksonville. Uh, I'm sorry, the turnover bias in the favor of the Eagles doesn't match up very well uh, for Jacksonville, considering that uh, Mr. Jekyll and Hyde, Blake Bortles, has been mostly Hyde. Oh, and, man, he has been. I mean, they've been all over the place, man. They he, benched him. He's you know? really, he's really, he's really making them think really hard about coming up with another quarterback. Uh, I know they're going to try to stick with him and start him this week, um, but you never know. See, I don't want to talk about this game too long because I know we got these other games to go to. But there's, there, I think there's a locker room dynamic going on with the Jaguars between the offense and the defense. It's, it's been spoken on. And um, having played some football in my past and been in some locker rooms, I kind of understand where they're coming from. But whatever it is that the defense is feeling about the offense, what's most important is that we win games. And for some reason, and I'm not trying to say they're not playing well on purpose, but they got to get this thing out of their heads that we can't move the ball and we can't score, therefore, and they let down, and then teams are making them look bad. They got to have a little pride in that defense. They have the people to get the job done. They need to step up. They really need to step up. And for some reason, they seem to feel comfortable in London. They have in the past. So what I'm going to say is that they jump up, Surprise the Eagles, who are also floundering a little bit right now. Gave up a 17-point lead to Cam Newton last week. Obviously, Bortles is not Cam Newton, but I think the defense for Jacksonville will come through, so I'm going to take the Jags. You know, you're going to take the Jags. The thing with the Jags is this. Right now, to everyone's surprise, Jacksonville is 31st in turnover differential with minus 12. Yeah. Only team versus my beloved 49ers with minus 15. Yeah. And I mean the fumbles, um, this it's just it's it's killing them. So I can understand a little bit about how the defense feels, but yeah, but that not. goes along with my point. Like if they're not if they're not getting turnovers, they're not helping the offense. Right. Exactly. Okay. They gotta do their part too. They have to do their part, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right, moving right along. Tampa Bay, Cincinnati. I do believe that's a division game. Uh, oh, uh, no. No? No, Cincinnati's in the Central. Central, okay. Cincinnati has a net point bias of 10 net points and a turnover differential in their favor of nine, giving them a bias plus score of 19. This is crazy, okay? Everybody knows Tampa Bay's defense is weak. But since Jameis has been back, he's been putting up huge numbers. Sometime in a losing effort, but putting up huge numbers. Yeah, he's going to throw you a pick or two. Yeah, he's going to get sacked and fumble, okay? But he comes back and he's slinging it. It looks like, as you look down the schedule, every game they're in is going to be some sort of a shootout. So... Fantasy-wise, if you want to throw that out there, Jameis Winston is a good quarterback to have, okay, because he's going to put up numbers. But um, 
Cincinnati's defense is starting to flounder too. They started right. off the season looking like they were going to be kind of decent and they are not getting it done. And if Andy Dalton and they don't get that, if Andy Dalton doesn't turn into the Andy Dalton that they all want him to be, Marvin, Mr. Hot Seat Lewis, again, is going to be looking at maybe losing his job. I don't know how long this dude's going to hang on. As far as I know, he's the longest tenured head coach in the NFL right now, um, or close to it. Somehow he keeps his job. Somehow they keep blowing it in the playoffs or barely making it. Ah, this is a toughie. I think Jameis is going to pull this one out. I'm going to take Tampa Bay. Okay. All right. All right. Go kind on. of going against the bias here a lot. I'm... I see you, man. I see you. <laughs> What's going on with you here? Seattle and Detroit. Two NFC teams. Uh, this should be a good Seattle. game. Huh? This should be a good game to watch. Seattle has a, a net point bias of 27 net points and a turnover margin bias of eight, giving them a bias plus score of 35. Right. But people are starting to like Chicago. First of all, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Detroit. We, we missed that game. I missed the Jets-Chicago game. We'll go back to that. Uh, Detroit. Oh, we skipped the Jets-Chicago game. Didn't yeah, that's okay. We can go back to that one. Go back to Detroit. it. Um, Stafford is Stafford. He's got the weapons through the air. It's their running game that they can't seem to get going. Uh, the rookie, Carryon Johnson, has been doing better. Blunt looks like he might be out of gas. Theo Riddick, uh, what are you going to do? He catches a lot of passes. He doesn't get many yards. Ugh. Seattle defense. I think, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the bias on this one and go with Seattle, even though they're in Detroit. But it should be a very good game to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, that's my sleeper team, and you got to watch out for those guys. Yeah, they're, I think they're waking up. I think Russell's starting to get a handle on things. They got their running game going with uh, their little one-two punch with Carson and Davis, and um, I, I like Seattle to make a move here. And okay. let's remind everybody, this is week eight. We are at midseason. There's a yeah. whole lot that can happen between now and the end. It's almost a little sad, isn't it, to be at it? Halfway through the season already. We found oh. we were just getting going, man. We just <laughs> gosh. Football, football. We skipped over the Jets in Chicago. Jets are going to Chicago. Chicago has a 30 net point bias in their favor. Uh they have a turnover margin bias of eight, giving them a bias plus score of thirty-eight in their favor. I like Chicago all day in this one. Uh, yeah. And the last time I checked, both Jets running backs are dinged up. I have no idea which one's going to start. I have no idea if both of them will be ready or not. They got to put somebody on the field. Meanwhile, you got Sam Darnold. A lot of people like him. They think he's got a good future. But his immediate future this Sunday looks bleak. <laughs> <laughs> looks bleak. And um, Tyreek Cohen, who is the um, – Pass catching running back for behind Bears. Jordan Howard for the Bears right. has had a couple of monster days in the last couple of weeks. Uh, boy, that Jets defense—I don't know—they give up a lot of a lot of yards on the ground. This this could get ugly. Got to got to like Chicago for this one. Okie dokie, going with the bias here. Uh, Denver, Kansas City. Kansas City have a 77 net point bias and a two uh, and a two turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them a net point bias plus score of 79. Hmm. You said Kansas City has a bias plus. Yep. Well, now <laughs> I shouldn't be thinking this long on this. Denver's defense is not that good, although they had a spectacular outing against the Cardinals, which was against, a little bit the, against the Cardinals. But listen, it was a it was a little bit surprising because if if you could pull up, and I'm not asking you to, but if you look back at the defensive rankings, and I mentioned this last week, and I know anybody who watched last week is probably saying that idiot picked the Cardinals. What the hell is wrong with him? 
but the defense was defenses were very close ranked and in fact the cardinals defense was ranked higher and i really thought they were going to make a better showing but instead they proved that larry fitzgerald's getting a little old they don't throw the ball to the rookie kirk enough they have little to no tight end play and they still haven't figured out how to get uh, David Johnson the ball. So I'm going to have to uh, – uh, uh, oh, so all that added up to Denver jumping on them and Von Miller just going bananas. Uh, that being said, I have to stick with Kansas City. I really don't think Denver's defense is that good. I really don't think Von Miller's going to have another monster day. And although – uh, Denver may score some points, and this could be a high-scoring game. I'm not going to say a crazy high-scoring game, but it could be a high-scoring game if Case Keenum comes to play. Um, I got to go with Kansas City. They're just they're just too strong. Yeah, I'm with you there. And um, Case looks like he he's missing the uh, Minnesota uh, water. Well, he's he's missing the le- the Minnesota left tackle he had because Von Miller was eating his lunch. Um, okay. We're talking about Case Keenum. You said Von Miller was eating his, you're talking about Cardinals, though. Oh, oh, yeah, I was talking about the Cardinals. Sorry. It was such an awesome showing. I, was, I, <laughs> I got a little, a little carried away with yourself there. <laughs> it was, hey, it was it crazy just, there, Benny. It, it didn't look fair, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know something? I mean, he said he was going to kick the, you know what? Yeah, he did. And you're right. That, but, again, you got a rookie quarterback. And I think they really just took advantage of that guy. And I think he said they were going to kick their butts because he looked at the film and said, this dude can't stop me. Yeah, well, that's probably true. But, I mean, just overall, it really looked like the, uh, like the, you know, the rookie was in a little yeah. bit over his head with, with yeah. that rush. Yeah. So Absolutely. All righty, all righty. Let's look at this division matchup between the Washington Redskins and the New York football giants. Washington has a 53 net point bias in their favor and a 10 turnover margin bias in Washington's favor, adding up to 63 as a bias plus score in Washington's favor. 63. What are your boys going to do, Benny? I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't call it. This is this is too tough. But first of all, Josh Norman is going to be all over Odell. I think Odell will still play well. I think he's not going to fall into that trap like he did last year. But I just can't count on these guys to get it done. I really can't. Washington's pretty tough against the run. I uh, believe they held Zeke down. So yeah. that means that Saquon's going to have a tough day. So I'm going to go with Washington. I just – I can't trust the Giants right now. I really can't. I, I mean, I want to see them play well, but I got to go with the Skins. I'm still amazed that and I'm, that um, Eli and, and the Giants can't at least get that quick passing game down. Those quick slants, those those quick curls, those those quick outs to the back, just enough to keep those chains moving, you know, so that they can stay somewhat viable. I mean, even if they get down there and kick a field goal, I mean, how many? There's a lot of teams that have won games twelve to, you know, twelve to seven or True. Know, like that. But just he, with all his experience, it just seems like that quick game should come more naturally, and it's just not happening. That's true. They did go downfield a little bit more. Uh, they had some. They had some big plays to back Amanda Shepard. Um, yeah, I mean it'll open up once you get. You know, you got to get one thing going. You know what right, I mean? Right. In order to begin to manipulate the defense, you can't. Excuse, you can't play action if you have no run game. You know, and you can't bring them up a little closer. You know, as far as you, like with your tight end, I like to see you know um, Ingram get moving a little bit more. Right. Um, especially in that short game, that, that seven to ten yard quick passes. Because if your lines not can't hold, you know, long, then you gotta get the ball out your hands. Right. And I mean that's just that's just common sense. I'm a little surprised that they haven't been able to do that. 
We talked about this game, the rematch. However, this time, Cleveland is going to Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh has a 43 net point bias in their favor. Cleveland has a 12 turnover margin bias in their favor. However, that reduces Pittsburgh's bias plus to 31 points. Um, I'm thinking Pittsburgh because, again, I'm dis the two defenses that I've probably been most disappointed in is, one, the Jaguars, and then two, Cleveland. I, I just thought Cleveland's defense was going to show better than what they've shown so far. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. I, I thought that would be their saving grace along with Baker Mayfield playing a little better than people expected. But it's starting to be Cleveland. Uh, yeah, I got to go with Pittsburgh, and I don't think this one's going to be close. Pittsburgh's coming off the bye. All their weapons are healthy. This This could get ugly too. And I don't think they care about um, Le'Veon anymore. Well, I mean, that's another subject that we can talk about, but it seems to me like he's still trying to dictate how this thing is going to play out. Uh, he's not stupid. He's looking at the games. I'm sure he's watching on TV. He sees what James Conner is doing. So he knows that they're not missing him that much. They mm -hmm. have a viable running game. And this right. guy's playing really well. So Absolutely. that gives them leverage, okay? So now he's trying to hang on to his leverage and making sure that he doesn't sign anything or give them the ability to trade him until the trade deadline is over. When's the trade deadline? Uh, I think it's in two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's two more weeks to go. Um, so that's why we haven't heard anything about him coming back. I think he's going to sit back, wait, come back, sign, around week 10, I believe week 10 is, is the deadline. And then, you know, it's going to take him at least one game to get in game shape, assuming that he's a work, workout warrior and he's in really good shape. It'll still take him one game to get used to getting hit. Uh, a week, of, let me put it this way, a week of practice and one game. And then there'll be a timeshare for – at least two games, you can't bench Connor. So now he's part of a committee where before he was the bell cow, as they like to say. So, right. you know, he, he's not going to make but so much noise. Le'Veon comes back. You put him in your fantasy lineup? I, I don't have him. Uh, if I had him and uh, I was playing with maybe Alex Collins or – Lamar Miller or something, yeah, I'd probably put him back because he's always dangerous and he can always score touchdowns. So. The next game looks to be very interesting. Could I think this might be my intriguing game of the week. The Baltimore Ravens visiting the Carolina Panthers. Baltimore has a 64 net point bias in their favor. Carolina has a four turnover margin bias in their favor, giving Baltimore a 60 in the bias plus score in their favor. 60? 60. Wow. Okay. Obviously, Baltimore has the, ser uh, the superior defense, although the Panthers' defense is not bad. The Panthers' defense is also very good against the run. Panthers' the defense are ranked eighth. They've given up 131 right. points. Baltimore's right. defense is ranked one, as we said before. Right. Giving up 101 points. Right. So the Panthers' defense is not a bad defense, and they are extremely tough against the run, which could render Baltimore offensively to being uh, pass-heavy. Flacco is having a decent season, but not a great one. But I got to go with Baltimore because we saw the Panthers kind of struggle for three quarters against the Eagles and then take them apart in the fourth quarter. That's not going to happen against the Ravens. Look for a low scoring Ravens win. Carolina is ranked uh, 24th in scoring with 142 points. Right. So they're not exactly uh, scaring everybody with their offense at this no. point. Basement Bowl. I guess I really should say that. 
Indianapolis versus the Oakland Raiders. Indy has a 70 net point bias in their favor and a seven turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them a 77 bias plus score in the favor of Indianapolis. I'll tell you right now, there's nothing to see here. They took the Bills apart last week. T.Y. Hilton is back. Andrew Luck is really starting to cook. And their defense wasn't half bad. Mm. They're flying around out there making plays. Oakland has nothing. This game will not be a contest at all. Yeah, Oakland is minus 66 net points. They rank 30. That's awful. And that pretty That's much awful. says just, the picture, right? This is terrible. This is another potential um, intriguing game for me. Although the net points, the bias plus score rather is rather lopsided. Green Bay is going into LA to visit the Rams. The Rams have a 103 net point bias in their favor and a five turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them a bias plus score of 108 in favor of the Rams. Now, do me a favor. Where, where are the Rams ranked defensively? On defense, the Rams are ranked. I see this, but it's really small in front of me. That's my fault. Hold on one second. You have points for and points against. Seventh. Okay. Green Bay is ranked 11th. Okay. Uh, this could be a really dangerous game for Green Bay. This, this, this game could really shake Green Bay to the core if they don't compete early. The Rams have the potential to blow them out. They really do. If they and they're home, if they jump on Green Bay, this this could be bad. But if anybody has the potential to hang in there and really play well, it's Aaron Rodgers. This is I a very I thought you were going to say the Packers. You went straight to Aaron. <laughs> I went straight to Aaron. It's, it's all about Aaron, man. It's all about It's all about Aaron. Aaron. Um, again, Devontae Adams is playing great. Geronimo Allison should be back. Uh, they still got Scantling going. Randall Cobb is supposed to be back, although I don't think he's the impact player that he used to be. And uh, what I, you know what's holding Green Bay back? They need to decide who the running back is going to be and let the guy carry the ball. That's what they got to do. That's okay. what they got to do. And I think that guy is going to be Aaron Jones. I really do. Okay. But they like to play Montgomery and they like to play Williams and the three-headed thing. And then should I put him in? It's almost that thing like we used to get on uh, Deuce Daly about. Like, what is this running back rotation? I don't understand it. Right, right. That's right. what I see when I watch Green Bay. Right, exactly, exactly. All right, so that's the uh, second largest bias plus of the of the week. Here's the real basement bowl. <laughs> San Francisco going into Arizona with the Cardinals. Now San Fran actually has a net point bias of 32 points. Arizona has a turnover margin bias of 12, reducing the bias plus score for San Fran to 20. The thing about San Fran and Arizona are that they're both heavily in the negative in terms of net points. Arizona has minus 92 net points and San Fran has minus 60. San Fran's leading the league in turnovers, especially with fumbles. And I was really, I mean, even Juszczyk was fumbling. Uh, crazy enough, playing the game today and Juszczyk fumbled on the, on the goal line. Ugh. In that last game, and I'm literally playing the game of Madden, and didn't use check fumble on the goal line. <laughs> I'm like, uh, this is a little too real here, ladies. Wow. But uh, yeah, yeah, San Fran has the bias, but they're going into Arizona, and Arizona handed them, handled them 
the first time they played. Again, a division matchup. Okay. Can we pause? Yeah, so the, you know, the San Francisco 49ers have the bias plus of 20 in their favor. Uh, again, can, uh, the Cardinals seem to have their number. I think the Cardinals secondary creates problems for our receivers. And that's where I think if they have an advantage, it's there. And we, we haven't been able to put the rush on as I think I would expect with the talent that we have on our front eight. Right. But, uh, right now the bias is going with the Niners, so I'm happy, baby. I hear you. I hear you. But, again, uh, like you said, that Arizona defense seems to give you guys trouble. I think they will again. Your defense is pretty poor there. Uh, that might be uh, just the medicine that Arizona needs to get their offense rolling. So um, I think I'm going to go with Arizona at home against this on, on this no! one. No! Well, I, I, no, no. It, it's probably got a lot to do with the fact that they disappointed me so badly against Denver, and I thought they were going to play so much better. And Denver's offensive weapons, especially their pass rush, is a lot better than the 49ers. So if the 49ers pass rush is lacking, that will allow Josh Rosen to kind of get himself together and maybe give us a better performance, in which case I believe Arizona will win the game. Sorry. All right. We'll go with that for right now. Yes, sir. So that finishes up the Sunday slate of games and what we have left is the largest bias plus of the weekend. Well, it's not really the weekend, because that's Monday night. When? Wait. The England Patriots. Monday night? Is it a doubleheader? Who's playing oh, Sunday night? I'm sorry. I'm missing Sunday night. Here we go. This is a good game. Yes. The Saints and the Vikings. Saints yes. are going into Minnesota. The Saints have a 29 a uh, net point bias in their favor. Minnesota has a, a turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them, giving New Orleans a 25 uh, bias plus score in New Orleans' favor. Okay, Minnesota's been real shaky on defense. It's a fact. It may be surprising to a lot of people, not as surprising at this point in the season as it was earlier in the season, but shaky nonetheless. New Orleans is cooking on offense, and their defense has been getting better. So I like them to go into the dome on the turf, just like they have at home, put up numbers, and beat Minnesota. However, I do expect it to be a good game. Okay. I like what Cousins is doing. I love what Thielen is doing. But, again, uh, I think if Dalvin Cook doesn't play, which I don't believe he will, then that means that the Vikings are going to have to give Latavius Murray most of the running game action. Um, again, like I said, the Saints defense has been playing better. If they can hold Murray down, because they can't hold Phelan down, but if they can hold Murray down, they got a good chance of winning. And I believe they'll make that happen. The um, really funny um, – Kirk Cousins had the one pass. It went between two guys, and I think it was Thielen or somebody that caught the pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh, it's a great pass, great pass. <laughs> somebody doing analytics on TV calculated the probability of that completion at 12%. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. But he made that throw, though. He made it. Well, sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're good. <laughs> Gunslinger. <laughs> He's a gunslinger. Yeah, He's making all the money. I ain't exactly putting Kirk Cousins in the gunslinger. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. But New Orleans says the bias plus score of 25, and um, I'm thinking that's going to hold. Okay. All right, all right. So now we're getting to Monday Night Football, right? Yes, sir. Man, you got to feel a little sorry for Buffalo, man. I mean, a little bit. 
the Patriots are coming into their stride now. Buffalo uh, is getting ready to start, I believe, Derek Anderson. Yes. Who you said was somewhere in a, uh, in a, like a centennial in terms of age. He's like a centenarian, 100 and Yeah, he's getting up there. He's, 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 up there. he's way up there. And he's just getting up off of his couch. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. Uh, the Patriots have a 129 net point bias in their favor and a five turnover margin bias in their favor, giving them 134 bias plus score in favor of the Patriots. Okay. This would be the <laughs> upset of the year. <laughs> Not going to happen. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. Not after Andrew Luck shredded them last week. If Andrew Luck can shred them like that, just imagine what Tom Brady's going to do to them. If this, this game might not be worth watching unless you're just a Patriots fan and you just relish in them smacking somebody around. Or unless you're like me and you and it's, it's football, so right. <laughs> we're going to be there. No matter what. And, and, and Shady's in the concussion protocol, so he might not play. Shady's in – you know, everybody – I keep saying these articles talking about where Shady should be traded to. And if he's well, that's – That's because the, the Buffalo can't win with him, so. Take you know, he's, he's not. He's not a difference maker for them anymore. With all the quarterback problems that they're having, he is not a difference maker for them anymore. He's also – Getting, I don't want to say old. I think he's thirty. So you know what they say about running backs once they turn thirty. You know, he had a couple concussions. He always spraining an ankle. If I'm them, I'm thinking better to get rid of him now than later. I don't know who they have though. Who's who's backing him up? Chris Ivory. Is that who it is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris has had his day. Yeah, but you could you could. You can probably live with him through a rebuild rather than try to live with Shady through a rebuild when you can get something for him. Yeah, yeah, you're probably, you're probably right about that. All right, so that wraps up the matchups for the yeah. week. Um, we're going to move into, I'm going to do a quick overview in terms of turnovers. Because uh, we, we, we talk about the turnover margin or the turnover differential. We don't always go into the numbers of fumbles, the numbers of uh, interceptions, oh, okay. both giving and taking, that make up those numbers. So I just wanted to kind of take a look and, and share a little bit about who's doing what relative to that. So let's start off with takeaways in terms of interceptions. And the three top teams in terms of intercepting the ball is Chicago Bears, the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins, all with 11 interceptions to date. Okay. So following that, in terms of rounding off the top five, you have the Patriots and the Jets with 10. So those two teams have double digits. Everyone else is in single digits. Colts, Chargers, Seattle, nine. Denver, Kansas City, seven. And also the Rams, Vikings, and Panthers also at seven in terms of interceptions, takeaways. Okay. The worst in terms of interceptions um, are the Jaguars with three, the Cowboys, the Lions, and the Saints with two, and my 49ers and the Bucks with one interception so far this year. That's terrible. Shame on the Jaguars. Shame on them. I'm, I'm very disappointed. The only plus is that uh, Jaguars cornerback has begun to shut his mouth. As he should. As he should.